ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of My Final, Final Stallions! Man, what a time. So we are going to be talking today about 4.0. Can you believe it, gents? The fourth not one. Not one. Not two. Not three. Number four. four. Yeah, I had to say it. Oh, man. It, you know, it's interesting. Like, it keeps getting better. No. Yeah. It it does keep getting better. This is the best one. I said it. It's just a fun concept. And Klopp laid out for the people who have not heard the rules or loose rules, I guess, of vinyl roulette. Yeah. We don't need to go into, like, all the details, details, details. But... <laughs> Essentially, we are picking six albums at random. How we randomize how they're picked can vary from time to time. But as long as you have a method that works for you, you're playing vinyl roulette. And so the six albums that we drew for 4.0 were as follows. We were familiar with a band called Return to Forever. Our video editor, Al Casino, and you can check him out at A1 underscore Casino on YouTube. Uh, he also helps edit these videos. Joined us for one and a 1. half. 1.5, yeah, because we only did three albums for that. And so one. it was a half, and we got a Return to Forever album there. And our yeah. boy Cheek took control of us. And we would always say that name around Michael, and Michael would be like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Who's Cheek? <laughs> yeah, I, I just said it. And they said, like, yeah, Cheek. I'm like, oh, wait, this is like someone who actually plays good music. I'm like, oh, shit. And so, of course, I think I went first because so Klepp uh, hosted and he developed the rules of how odds boosts were put in. I don't remember exactly how it happened, but nonetheless, for the second time in a row, my odds boost didn't even fucking matter. It went out the door. So <laughs> I believe since I was uh random or or I, or random random i believe since because i was the loser i chose first and it was randomized between all the albums out there and of course i chose cheek and the boys once again and it is called romantic warrior again by return to forever and spruce not to put salt on the wound but i i think <laughs> This didn't get picked from like the R's. I think this got you got like something in the 120s or something, and it it hit from my odds boost. It wasn't just like a random like from the whole list of albums. <laughs> my oh my, I can't win. That's why I'm hosting <laughs> the next one, and the rules are in my court. But yes, what a way to start out the Romantic Warrior. And this this album is probably, if not their best, it's like one of their top two, like either that or Music Magic, in my opinion. But yeah, six songs, like beautifully composed. The classic Return to Forever lineup where you got like Chick Corea on piano. It's an instrumental album, so no singing. Aldi Miola on guitar, Stanley Clark on bass, Lenny White on drums, just all fantastic musicians i'm pretty sure all four of those guys played with miles davis at some point so that's kind of all you need to know right there yeah this album kicked my ass it was my first time listening to them and it was just like what is this and like, they kept saying like return it's forever i'm like what <laughs> but um i've never really heard of them but yeah it was just it was like a magical time, I swear. It was just yeah. like so much going on and just great music. I mean, these guys basically invented the genre like jazz fusion. They're playing like classical jazz, but using rock and roll instruments. And they're like pretty much the first people to do it and do it with like broad appeal. It, uh, the only song I knew off of it was that medieval overture, which was oh, yeah. just like a sound like a 16 bit song at some points. It was yeah. like wacky as hell, but uh, not all these songs sounded like that, but it was, yeah. And just like, a, of course we just get with the most like random stuff. 
uh, for our first of course, album. Of course, you said medieval. Like the album cover is just like a knight in an armor on the horse, an armor, and it's just like there's a lot going on in there. And the art is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. And then, so Michael is up next, if I recall correctly. But before mm-hmm. the roulette, Michael had some questions for you, Captain Klepp. And do you remember what he asked you about some specific albums? Yeah, that's right. So he was just like, hey, I don't see the Blink-182 Greatest Hits album on the list. I was like, well, yeah, because it's a Greatest Hits album. Because I, I have a handful of Greatest Hits albums, and generally we don't include them because we're like we we just it's usually just studio albums there might be like a handful of live albums but generally we're like looking for releases where like it's a new creation of the artist at that point in time and but michael's a big blink 182 fan and so he was like well guys all the songs on this are really good why not there's no other blink and so we were like, all right. And like, what are the one odds? Ex- yeah, yeah. What are the odds? Like one in like 700 something. <laughs> Michael, yeah. what, what do you choose? Yeah. So like this is well before the 4.0 was even going to happen. I'm just, you know, I'm like, dude, Blink-182 is literally what Adam said. One of my favorite bands. It's like where I started to like actually learn how to play drums off their songs and everything. And I just never looked back. And I must say, yeah, give the greatest hits on vinyl. Really? He's like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, we gotta put that in, of course. And, you know, he's like, oh, and I'm like, dude, no, like you said, that's all the best songs that Blink says. Like, we have to pick it. Likely it won't get picked because there's just hundreds and hundreds of finals, right? Well, I play the game this time. <laughs> I didn't play the game last time because I just, well, I don't know, just didn't want to lose. I was like, screw it, let's go in this time. Oh, yeah, I win. Oh, yeah, I get my album. Blink 182, greatest hits. <laughs> let's go. Oh my God. It was amazing. Took me back and just, it's a long album too. Is it not a yeah. double disker? Yeah. It is so, a double disker. Cause there's so many good songs. It's such a great band, but man, that it just took me back and you like, okay, this is from that album. Like, Oh, this one's from, you know, take off pants and jacket. Like, Oh, this one's from, it's just really cool to see. And it goes from the beginning to the early stuff down to the later stuff and i was, was gonna say i i did appreciate how they included songs off of the first two albums which are like not very popular you comparatively speaking like was it buddha and cheshire cat yeah i don't even know it may be dude ranch but dude ranch is kind dude, of well, dude ranch well has no. damn it on it so that's like i feel like that was their breakthrough album no you're like cheshire cat yeah stuff like that it's, they just they did have that on there. Like Eminem's was head on was Eminem's on New Ranch. I don't know. But um, regardless, I was just it was kind of like a personal win for me because like I called it like we need to I kind of had to work for it a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And now we listen to it. It's done now, but I got my personal win. And Great there time. is one song not now that is not on any other album. So there's that. That's and, a song too. Oh, um, the cover of Another Girl, Another Planet. So there's two songs that you're not gonna find on other blink albums. Yeah. So that was fun. This next album, though, ooh, that was a fun surprise. I just want to say whenever I think of that blink album, I just think of us watching that old wrestling uh WWE <laughs> with like Rick Rick Flair. And he was like, yeah. Whoa! The Royal Rumble. It was the, yeah, that's what the it was. famous Royal Rumble, man. Yeah. Woo! yeah. That was a fucking time. Um, but yes, yeah, so we head into our third album, which Mr. Klepp, I think you won your odds boost. Yeah, that's right. And what got pulled was a pocket full of kryptonite by Spin Doctors. And Amazing. Boy, was I juiced for this because I feel like it's not necessarily a band, but it's an album that I've just been like banging the drum about for so long. And it's like, I don't know. It's just so good. I, I don't want to call the them like a one album wonder, but like, I mean, their, their other albums are good, but like this one is just like one of the best albums of the nineties. Like every single song is just so freaking good. And, 
like the song two princes everyone knows like that's a big radio hit and that might actually be my least favorite song on the album well little miss yeah that that does get a little bit of radio play and i guess jimmy olsen's blues a little bit the i would say those two are more like on like alternative rock stations whereas like two princes is like any sort of 90s or like pop rock radio it uh yeah i i knew little miss and um whatever the i don't even have it in front of me uh two, two princes, princes. Yeah. yeah uh i was trying to follow the guitar i remember on the first half of this album and it was like I just like couldn't. I was like completely lost in the sauce, uh, trying to follow it. But man, what time is it? Just took us on a ride. Oh yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. No, that and Adam, you have like been sending me like songs like months, months well before this 4.0. So I was kind of like already familiar just on your recommendation. And the fact that it got picked right after my blink was just like what like this is incredible. So um it was such a good, like, what do you say, like a 90s alternative album, though. Very underrated as far as the songs that people are not familiar with. Yeah, technically jam band. So, like, this band was actually started by John Popper of Blues Traveler. And, like, both bands kind of started to gain traction at the same time. And, like, John chose to, like, stick with Blues Traveler as he you know, didn't have time to do both bands. Yeah, like kind of had to pick. So he picked Blues Traveler and then found the replacement. Um and so Spin Doctors was like successful, had their own career. But yeah, they are known for like jamming in their live performances. So they yes, they are nineties alternative, but they are also technically a jam band. Probably why I liked it so much. It just reminded me of jam band music. You know, it's awesome. And they, it, like I said, it was a surprising album. I was just like, whoa, Spin Doctors are this good? Like, yeah. And speaking it, of 90s alternative. <laughs> well, hang on, Club. Don't forget about our halftime. We had a first yes. official halftime, which we celebrated and listened to some of our famous Stampede Shuffle, which you can find on Spotify now. We are currently on the Stampede Shuffle 2.0. 2.0. Spotify kept us at <laughs> yeah. Spotify kept us at uh 10k, but as Michael just said, we got automated from the newest uh Jameer Kwai album. We got the unreleased at the time Eon song called "The Feelings yep. Right," mm-hmm. and that was just a great time a refresher to send us into the second half. And, and yeah, clap. This well, album. So this we'll would just... have been yours. Yeah. Yeah, it would have. And I am glad I chose this because you actually had sent me this album probably like two or three months. It was somewhere in the winter where you're just like, yeah, I have never listened to this band's first album and it blew my mind. And the band that we are talking about is the Smashing Pumpkins, the album Gish, their first one. Yeah, and I think so. What's so crazy about this album is there are so many points where like everything just like calms down and it's like very like tranquil. There's it's just like good vibe, feel good music, and then in comes Billy just yelling, and then the drums just boom, and guitar just comes shredding in, and you and you're just like whoa whoa, how do we go from point a to point b uh they remind me of um spin doctors in a way where i was just like super surprised whoa so this is what they can really do versus what you normally hear i don't really i love you know smashing pumpkins but i can only name you know six songs off the top of my head but yeah it it was the first album yeah it was the first album too so but they yeah. rocked like crazy. I was like, whoa, I didn't know they could do this. And then they go into like you know, my day dream where like the bassist girl is singing. I'm like, okay, this is Smashing Pumpkins. Technically, it's just really interesting album. Yeah. None of, none of those songs are really hits. Like I didn't, my first time when I listened to it, like Spruce said, like 
few months before we did this, like I didn't know any of the songs, like not one. So yeah, I don't think any of them I recognize either. But they all rocked. <laughs> they were like a rock band. <laughs> like, damn. It was really cool to listen to. Different perspective on Smashing Pumpkins for sure. And it was like 1991, too. Like, super, yep. you know, early. Like, damn, they were at it same, for a while. Same year as the Spin Doctors album. Wow. Really? Interesting. Yep. That's a good year of music. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, you can pick any year from the 90s and you can find just like, 20 albums that just fucking slap. Now, this album was a great, great vibe and just continued a fantastic 4.0. And then it led us to our third period, which Michael chose. And then, so, okay. I'll, I'll also add, there was a twist that we added where in between albums, we were randomizing songs off the stampede shuffle and the rule was if a song played that you know the album that that song is on is in the mix then you can opt to just like all right that's the album and for the first time of the evening michael's hit he got a song off of the album riot act by pearl jam and michael what did you opt to do (laughs) go again yeah so we we did not go with riot act michael went back to the board and we got credence clearwater revival willie and the poor boys it ain't me it ain't me yeah that was awesome yeah yeah that credence album was crazy and it's it was the only credence album in the mix yeah, like really good band, and it, it was like pretty cool because yes, yeah, so we we get hit with some fusion jazz right off the bat, go into some like late nineties, early two thousands punk, and then you get two nineties albums back to back with a little bit of different flavor, and then you're thrown back into the sixties with some like harmonica, blues, rock, with a little bit of jam to it. And I just vividly remember this is when we started making dinner and yeah, we treat, meat hounds. Yeah, we are meat hounds and we treat ourselves every single time we do one of these roulettes. And yeah, I just remember this album. We were just in the cooking mode. I think I was like chopping up the asparagus when Fortunate Son came on. Like, <laughs> yeah, and the steak was cooking. It was nice. Yeah, I just can't. I, not well, I was just gonna say fortune song. I mean, I just literally always think of Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's such a war song. It's like just Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, they got a handful that are about um came on 69. Yeah, they they've released like a lot of albums in that time period, like 67, 68, 69. Mm-hmm. Like that that band was actually pretty short-lived i want to say they only were around for like three or four years before they broke up but they put out like five six albums something like that interesting no it was a great vibe again just made for an absolute fantastic time and it led us into one of the most biggest surprises we've ever had in a roulette one (laughs) because it was our first ever and correct me if i'm wrong EP. That is correct. And Clap, you chose this one. What did you bring us home with? So, sort of like Michael, I hit on the Stampede Shuffle Lottery. I got a song off of the album Man in the Hot Seat by James Taylor Quartet, and I opted to not go with it and go, you know, back to the field because I was feeling like a greedy little pig. And <laughs> Instead, we got, uh, is it just self, is the EP self-titled as Village People? Um, Yeah, I think it's just a self-titled EP, Village People by Village People. And so it ended up not really working out, not because any of the music was bad, but because we got an EP, there were only four songs. 
and like i remember like it was over and we were just like what that's it like give us more 22 minutes and 16 seconds which is again just crazy to think about because uh, for the stampede out there if you go and listen to our 3.0 you will hear that we got outcast speak your box the love below which is a quadruple disker and is well over two hours and it's just the beauty of the roulette just shows that you could either get 22 minutes or two minute or two hours and 20 minutes i, I don't know any songs off this one i like that it was just two songs on the front two songs on the back uh really it was just a story of them starting out in san francisco and then hollywood and then becoming the village people on fire yeah Island. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah, I mean, the album cover is cool. And yeah, it, it, it was good. Um, it was a party. Remember, we were watching yeah. like, the music video with that um, San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My only complaint was that there weren't more songs. That That's it. Yeah, like you said, it was just a party. It was just a party album. Like, I mean, I actually think you put that on when people like come over and there's like, uh, how do you even get that? I remember when it, we, we picked it. I'm like, who has this? <laughs> uh, I want to say dollar bin. There's no way I paid like more than two bucks for it. <laughs> it's Michael, just funny. You're just like, yep, I'll take it. It's Michael, awesome. you, you, I remember when the club was going upstairs to get it, you were like, the village people? I was like, yeah, dude, like the YMCA, Macho Man. And you're like, I don't know any of those songs. <laughs> oh, I know YMCA and Macho Man. I, there's no way, dude. Like Macho, Macho Man. Come on. <laughs> So well, then, then you lied to my face because I because you said that I was like, <laughs> well, then you're in for something. I'm like, you don't know the village people. <laughs> maybe I did. Maybe I'm like, I don't know the name, but like I know the songs. But maybe I was yeah. just trying to spice it up a bit. But oh, man. cool, too cool. Yeah, it was... So cool, dude. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah. It was a great way to end it too. Like it didn't end on like uh, an album or that could have. You know, been on the darker side, if you will. Like it was just a nice nightcap to yeah, the no, day I do. of the four point oh. That that's a good point. Sometimes some like uh, of the yeah, later you, you could have got dead. your faces ripped off by tree yeah. theater again. Exa- yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it, music was great, but the timing and selection was just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then what made that that's so funny was we were watching UFC fights. During- no <laughs> boxing. We were watching like oh, amateur boxing. boxing. And yeah. Like yeah, that was uh, such a funny one. Yeah, one point oh, ladies and gentlemen, go listen to that one a hell of a start and a hell of a finish yeah absolutely we're getting better hey I'm just saying, this was my favorite one this is my favorite one well stay yeah. tuned for 5.0 because it's coming sooner than you think oh, I'm uh, scared. and your boy sprucey sprucey legoosey is hosting and man do i have some fun antics and in game games prepared and like Michael, Marty, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, it's. I'm really excited. And I don't know if your the listeners know, but dude, how many vinyls do you have collectively? It's getting up wild. Uh, let me check. Oh boy, I, I it just keeps I, growing, guys. I, yeah, I don't even know if I breach a hundred, but Club, you are like it, again by forty years old, you're gonna be able to open your own shop. Easily, easily. So, so we are just like a hair under six hundred. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Like the odds, like are. I mean, come on. It is crazy uh, that some hit. I mean, obviously one has to be picked, but I don't know. Every single time, I'm just like, of course it's this one. Like, of course. So, right. I don't know. There's there's been funny things that have happened throughout this, and, and it's just fun again to be locked in. Like, as soon as the album's pulled, you're not going anywhere. You're listening to the thing start to finish. Yeah, it's such a fun, fun concept. And it's only going to continue. Yeah, I mean, we can get like, either a system of a down and we can get Annie next. It's wild. It's <laughs> literally just a music yeah. library. You have no idea. Annie. <laughs> That's kind of what happened in 3.0. Like, I think 3.0 probably had the most diversity. Mm. I like a little consistency, but I, yeah, it is hey, what it is. It is. And, uh, yeah, no, 
fun time. I love that we recap these. Uh, I hope if there are some listeners out there that want to dive into this, I highly encourage it and share your stories with us down below or shoot us a DM yeah. or an email at final stallions. Cause we'd love to hear at, if you just randomly chose from your collection, what did the gods give you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Well, Michael, thank you once again for joining us. You are truly a vinyl stallion yourself. Yes. Thank you for having me. And I cannot wait for 5.0. It's fucking crazy. So stick around. <laughs> Don't get crazy. Uh, but besides that, my name is Spruce. I'm Clep. And I'm Michael. And this has truly, yet again, been another crazy, fantastically fantastic episode of Vinyl. 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 Vinyl.